Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? I am going to share my broadcast with my groups. It is just me uh, tonight. I am going to be sharing, talking to you all about emergency prepared readiness. Let me turn my phone down so um, when I share, it won't be <laughs> all over the place. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, prepared, emergency prepared readiness. Um, I see I have a comment already. Hi, Mike. And hi, uh, Life of a Fantastic Professional Nanny. I love that, Regis. I don't know how you came up with that, but I love it, I love it, I love it. I am, um, give me just a second and let me share this. Um, well, if Facebook will let me in, <laughs> I might be able to share it with my groups. So, um, Tonight, as I said, tonight we're going to be talking about emergency prepared readiness. I have brought, um, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, I have brought my first aid kit with me and it has more than just a, give me just a second. Oops. My volume's still up, sorry. Um, Okay. Now it won't let me share. What is, why does Facebook do this to me? It won't let me share my broadcast. I don't know why, but uh, let me see if I can get it on my other phone. If you all are watching, please share to your groups. Please share to your friends. Please share, 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 share. I want to go to my older phone and maybe my older phone will allow me to share this with my groups before we get started because I don't want anyone to miss out on this information. And let's see if they're going to let me share it on this page. If I can get in here. But it used to be a, a point where I could share down at the bottom, write a comment. It says, oh, it only allows me to write a comment on that phone. So I'm going to take out my other phone and see if it will allow me. If you just be patient with me. Are you serious, Facebook? I'm so just uh, thrown off. I'm just uh, so thrown off. It, it, oh, there it goes. Okay, it allowed me to share it to a group. Finally. And it's doing it the old fashioned way, y'all. What, what happened to Facebook? Where I have to go in here one at a time and share my change. I don't like this change. Facebook needs to go back to where it is. And I hope you're listening to me, Facebook. I don't like this. I'm just messing with my show. Okay. I am not liking this at all. Not at all. Okay, I'm gonna share it to one more group and then we're gonna get started. And everyone else will just have to catch up, I guess. Um, Cause I have no options of sharing this. So anyway, we're going to get started with and did I say hello? Welcome to Ask the Nanny. I apologize. Um, Facebook threw me for a loop tonight, and but it's not going to stop the show. We are talking about emergency prepared readiness tonight. 
And I want to start with um, children with inabilities. And when I say inabilities, because I don't like to call them disabled, I say inabilities, uh, you need to practice with your children. If you have children who are in a wheelchair, children who are um, slow to, to walk, you need to practice your escape group, getting out of the house, do a fire drill with the kids, children who are autistic especially. You know how they react to, to change. I've seen on some cars, they have a sticker on the side of the car where the child is that is autistic. And it says that, you know, I may not react the way you expect me to react because I am autistic. And I like that sign, but I also need you to realize as nannies, as mannies, as um, parents, you need to practice with your autistic child. Make it a part of, uh, somewhat a part of their routine because when a child hears a smoke detector go off or a loud noise, it affects them. They want to go run and hide. You don't need your child running to hide. You need them to have listen, to be able to listen to that smoke detector, to be able to hear the actual sound of the smoke detector and be ready to go out the door. Have a drill, especially with children who uh, it may be difficult to get out of the house or they may react, have an adverse reaction to hearing the smoke detector. So don't be afraid to let them hear the actual sound of the smoke detector. Now, I'm not telling you to do this every day, but make it a part, you know, at least once a week, once every two weeks, so they can get used to, oh, the smoke detector is going off. This is what we do when the smoke detector goes off. We don't run and hide. We, you know, call it whatever your routine is, create a routine. Have the kids meet you at the front door. Have a meeting spot. If they're old enough, if they're teenagers, have a meeting spot outside of the house that everybody gets to. And if you want, I know teenagers are competitive, so time it. When I had my home daycare, I had to time the, the how long it took me to get six children dressed and out of the house, especially in Alaska in the middle of the winter and it's dark outside. We had to have fire drills. For your safety, I would suggest that you do that with your children. Get them outside. Get them uh, to a point of a place, have a point, a meeting point. Even if it's an evacuation, if it's a flood or whatever is going on, hurricane, yesterday and the day before, uh, we had hurricane weather. It was Hurricane Hannah that was hitting the Texas coast. Now, I live kind of central, and but it was close enough to the coast where we got, it was sunshine, then rain, then thunder, then rain, then sunshine. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go for a walk. Nope, didn't happen. Because by the time I got dressed to go out, thunder. And then the bottom fell out. So if those rains start, and we just had little rain showers. But when you have a hurricane and those wind gusts and the rain come through, it can cause the, the waves in the ocean and the gulf. And they, they just kind of shift. And when they shift, it causes flooding. So it can be a flash flood and you are stuck. You don't want to be stuck. You want to be prepared for everything that's going on. So I have bought um, my, my first aid kit. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. Um, if you run, if you are on the highway and you're driving, because this has happened to me. We're in the mountains in Canada. 
driving home from Alaska, it's almost it's right at nightfall. And there's a lot of wilderness and a lot of mountains in between Alaska and Canada. And it started to lightly snow. And the car decides it wants to go kaplonk. What do you do with three children, a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and a seven-year-old? Have activities. Even if you have them in a bag that's tied down in the back or uh, in the trunk of the car, have activities to do with the kids in case your car just kind of just gives out on you. Have activities to do. And make sure that those activities are age appropriate. Have some for the older ones and from for the little ones. Uh, make sure that they are age appropriate. Make sure that you have um, coloring books, sticker books, um, books to read, um, play a game of, of I Spy with my little eye, uh, whatever is going to keep them entertained until you get to wherever you need to go. I spent an hour and a half, it took an hour and a half for us to get someone to help us. And we ended up driving on three cylinders to the next town, which was like 72 kilometers. Now don't ask me to do the math and put it in miles. But we drove on three cylinders to the next town. And when we got to the next town, it was a Sunday. Nobody was open. So we drove our car and parked it at the hotel. All the luggage is on top. We got to take all this luggage down in order to get our car fixed the next day. So that put us back a day. We had to find activities. Luckily. We were in a town where they had this old historic museum. We took the kids to the museum. There was a McDonald's next to the museum. So we found activities to do with the kids because we wouldn't, we didn't know when the car was going to be fixed, but we had to find something to do with them. We couldn't just sit, hold them up in a little small, tiny hotel because that's what we had, a tiny hotel. Be prepared for all of these things to happen. You never know when you're driving your car and something happens and it just kind of gives out on you on the side of the road. So I'm just telling you to be prepared for that. Now, keep a flashlight. I have a little one, it's this big, but when I turn it on, I know you can't see that, and I don't know. It has, it shines this little scope I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to hold it up to you. It has like this little magnifying glass bubble right here on the front of it. Okay. You can't see it there. There you can see it right there. It has like a, a bubble on top. So when you turn it on, it magnifies. I love this little flashlight. So it's not just this one little pin light that you can see just a little bit. When, it, when I turn this on and I shine it up against the wall, it is a huge light. Sometimes you can't see from this little pin light. You need to see your surroundings. And if you have a little pin light, it's gonna take you longer to rescue whoever you need to rescue because you only have a little pin light. If you have a huge light, you can see more at a time. So I would advise you to invest in a flashlight for your car because, let me, okay. This thing is mirrored, so I can't. But it has like a little, a little uh, globe. It's like a little ball on top, but it's magnified. So get you one of these. Now, in my first aid kit, I have a lot of things in my first aid kit, but it's not like a regular first aid kit. I have a husband. And sometimes myself, and I'm dropping stuff. Um, since COVID, I have added things to my uh, first aid kit. Things like da, 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 my Lysol. It's in my first aid kit. 
I keep it. This is the first aid kit that I keep in my car because Lysol is important. Disinfect, whatever. I also, because um, Alaska taught me a lot, but I also have a high blood pressure machine. Uh, well, I should say high blood pressure, but a blood pressure machine. It is battery operated. And I'll show you how it works. Uh, you push this little button and it starts and push that. Well, there we go. And the numbers pop up. And then all of a sudden, this starts to expand. The cuff start on it. And it, it says E1 because it's not on anybody. But I put this in here because Alaska, again, taught me a lot of things. Uh, things you wouldn't believe that you would need or you can use for certain things. Yeah, because if someone's blood pressure gets too high, they can have a heart attack. And then that's a whole nother emergency. So I like my blood pressure machine. When you go into the beach, this aloe vera, 100% aloe vera gel, I keep this in here. Sunburn. There's nothing worse than having, you know, falling asleep in the sun and somebody's got sunburn and it's like, don't touch me. This helps a lot with sunburn. It helps to heal and it helps to cool it off and to soothe it. I keep this because I used to live in Florida. Vitamin E. Vitamin E is a good healer. I scraped my knee one time. I washed it off and I put some vitamin E on it immediately. And it started helping it to heal. But you have to be careful with vitamin E, don't because it, it if you don't cover it up um, or be somewhere where it's not going to contract a lot of dirt because this is all I carry a little pin with me inside of my bottle. So if I have to pop one of these little, uh, I'll show you, I pop one of these little capsules and I use the gel inside of this vitamin E. I'll put my hand behind it so you can see. Can you see that little gel? Okay, it's slippery. It's about to fall out of my hand. But I keep this in my uh, in my first aid kit. Instant cold packs. I'll show you how this works. Because I have like six or seven in here, I can show you how it works. If I can get the bottle of box open. Um... Here we go. Now, this is what it looks like. This is a cold pack and it has instructions. These are the picture instructions. And these are the instructions on the back. And it tells you uh, for instructions, activate cold pack by squeezing the pack firmly in the middle. As soon as you hear the pop, shake the bag thoroughly Apply the pack to injury. Shake the cold pack uh, occasionally uh, use, during use for best results. Remove pack if it becomes uncomfortable. Reapply after a few minutes if, if comfortable. However, do not apply for longer than 20 minutes. And that is the, uh, don't, you're not supposed to use this more than 20 minutes. I had problems with my back. My doctor told me 20 minutes on, an hour off, and then 20 minutes back on. And I did that. Perfect. This was one of the ones that he gave me at the office. And it's an emergency cold pack. So I'm going to let you hear it pop. And then I'm going to call my husband and let him come get it so he can put it on his knee. Because his knee is bothering him. Okay, so. Y'all hear that pop? I need to shake it. Ooh, and it's nice and cold. Sam, can you come get the cold pack, please? <laughs> he wasn't. Can you, 
Put this on your knee. I'm on my program. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So <laughs> that's how that works. Uh, so instant cold pack. You need these. Hi, Patsy. How are you? So you will need an instant cold pack um, in your um, in your first aid kit. Now, I have several different kinds of bandages in my cold pack. I have the True Stay bandages in, and notice it's in a lot of different sizes because sometimes the injury is bigger than what you think it is. I also have these bandages, which are like a small gauze pad. I have a box full of them. You can continue, you know, you can use as many as you need. I have some that I have little small ones that I have in my little uh, baggie. They're about this big, but if you unfold them, they are really like cheesecloth is, is what I what I like to call them. Because they just kind of, it's, it's just a bunch, it's a mesh. You see that? That's what it looks like unfolded. But fold it up, it's a gauze. And it works. I have some hydrogen peroxide. You don't have to buy the fancy kind. But you do need some hydrogen peroxide. Pour over whatever wound to keep it, to clean it out. And keep it clean. This thing's less than the alcohol. It does sting. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it doesn't sting, but it stings less than the alcohol. Okay. Now, I also have some tape. I like this tape because if you see it, let me take that part off. I'm going to show you. Easy tear. But it's so it it is very sticky. It's easy to tear, but it's very sticky. You want to make sure that whatever you're putting on that that gauze. If your wound is too big for a a, a regular band aid, put some gauze on there. Have some tape in case of an emergency. Use your band aids to hold it on there. But always have some tape. I love this tape because it's easy to tear. You don't necessarily have to have a big pair of scissors. And speaking of scissors, those little scissors that come with your regular, um, I don't know, what do I do with them? The scissors that come with your regular um, first aid kit, it's your big pair. I had to cut a lady out of a uh, out of a seatbelt and drag her out of her car. That little bitty pair that comes, you know, you can stick two little fingers in there. That's not going to cut a seatbelt. Uh, you be sitting there going like this for forever, trying to get them out of the seatbelt. If you can't get to them otherwise, get you some scissors, some big ones. Okay, let me hold them this way. That will actually cut something. I also have these little eyedroppers. Never know when you're going to need them. I keep them in there. You never know. I do have the little alcohol patches. The little alcohol wipes. But mm -mm. I have full wipes in here. They are water wipes. I like the water wipes because they don't have a lot of perfume in them. They don't have a lot of, uh, uh, I won't say chemicals, but that, that, that perfume does have some type of chemical to it. That's why I like the water wipes. And you can wipe, wipe your hands with it. You can do whatever you need to with, with these wipes. And I keep them 
in this plastic uh, container and it keeps them moist. Be sure you check these every once in a while because uh, they might dry out. Just add a little water because they're water wipes. I also have in my bag for myself, I keep some ibuprofen. When my eye, my injured eye starts hurting and it starts to close like this and I can't see, the top of my eyelid starts to swell up. And the quickest way to get it to unswell is ibuprofen. I've been dealing with this injury since 1992 and I've learned how to get rid of the swelling. Um, the ice pack doesn't work so well with my eye but the ibuprofen will take it down quick. Now, I also have in my bag some clippers. You never know, they will come in handy. Those little things, little bitty things you need to, you know, pull that little, uh, that little uh, splinter. And I have a set of tweezers. Hold on, let me pull some of this stuff out of here so I can get to what I really want to show you. Um, I have a set of tweezers down in the bottom of here. Oh Lord, got too much stuff. These are the little scissors that come with the first aid kit. You see what I mean? These versus these, there's a bigger range and these cut more than this will do. So have you a big set of scissors instead of just a little bitty set. And I promise you, I do have a set of tweezers down in here somewhere. I'm just hiding from me right now. But what I wanted to show you also was the different size of um, gauze pads. I showed you the little ones, but I also have some bigger ones for, can you see that? The sterile pads for bigger wounds. And you use that tape I showed you to wrap that wound up. And I wanted to show you something else. I think we covered most of the first aid things the last time. But um, I have an extra for my phone because isn't it always the time when there's an emergency, your juice on your phone is gone. And, and you're like, where's my charger? Where's my charger? I keep my charger. I keep an extra charger in my first aid kit so I won't have to go looking because I'm already in a panic state trying to help somebody. And in order for me to, to uh, I put it on speakerphone and I talk to the paramedics, whoever I need to talk to about what's going on. There are my tweezers. Those little splinters that you get in your hands or, or whatever pieces of glass that you might need to take out and you don't want to cut your hands. Tweezers, they work wonders. Of course, I have some regular size band-aids and I have some big, huge band-aids, if you can see that. What is that on that band-aid? Okay, that needs to come out of there. Uh, but I have several of those. I keep a bottle of water. And I'm going to show you why I keep a bottle of water in my uh, in my bag. My husband was military, and he got these. Let me put it up here. It's called a tall tab. And I'm going to open them up for you. They're 100% biodegradable. Just add water. That's what it's called, a tall tab. I'll show you what it looks like. 
Let me see if it has a um, talltabs.com. T oh toe tabs. I'm sorry, it's not tall tabs, toe tabs. T O W T A B S dot com. If you want some of these, it's called a toe tab. Now I'm gonna open this up and I'm going to show you what this is going to do. Now, make sure you keep these out of uh, the kids' uh, range because they are small and they look like a piece of candy. You don't want your child trying to chew on this. Now, I keep water. I already have some water in this little bowl. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to hold it close. I'm going to drop this tab off into this water and I want you to watch what it's going to do. This is going to open up into a biodegradable washcloth. So if you don't have wipes or you don't have room for wipes, you can throw these in the diaper bag this opens up into a towel. It's wet. And there you go. I'm still here. But this is the towel. And again, you use just plain water. It's biodegradable. It's stretchable. You pull it all the way out. Somebody's faint and you need a cold compact, a, a cold towel to put on their head. Just roll this up and slap it on there. Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> it was seriously cold. But you have a cold towel. You need to put it on the back of their neck. Put a cold towel right there. This is, and you can throw it away. It's disposable. But it's called Toe Tabs, T O W T A B S dot com. So keep this out of reach of children, but you can use these as a um, as a little towel, as opposed to the wipes. This is truly a water wipe because all that's on there is the water. So if you want to use these little tabs. They are awesome. I keep them in my car. I keep them in my first aid kit. I have some in my purse. And I keep a bottle of water in the car for just a, that reason. I don't recommend keeping a bottle of water in your car, riding around all summer and drinking that hot water because it goes hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And the it, it depends on what kind of water you have. It goes through changes. So I would not recommend drinking that water, but what I would recommend is you can use it for this, for your uh, your towel. So that I would recommend it for. Now, another thing that I like, which is a safety uh, guard, I take it with me when I go walking. This is a Kubaton. Just looking at it, it seems like I keep it on my key ring, with my keys. Just looking at it, it looks like a plain little, you know, just something that you have on your key ring. You know, some people collect key ring, uh, little key ring doodads. But this is actually a weapon. And I'm going to show you how you use this weapon. You can get a set of these for like eight or nine dollars on Amazon.com. Now, if somebody comes and they grab you by the arm, if you put this right here on that bone right there and just squeeze this metal, it's it's a hard metal. Even if you just strike out, this thing hurts. If you just use it and just strike somebody, pop them upside the head, you'll see a big goose egg come up there. This is a weapon. Now, if you can hit them right there, because if you look, 
it has, let me see, it has a little point right there. If you hit them right there, you knock the wind out of them. And if you push hard enough, if you if you strike hard enough, you can break their trachea. You can just kill them, basically. If you can catch them right behind their ear, there's a nerve right behind their ear. If you push on it hard enough, they will go down. So there's other ways to use this, but I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> because I don't want to get in trouble, <laughs> but I'm just showing you ways that you can, women especially, you can use this little tool to uh, protect yourself, to get away. If they grab you from behind, just pluck them. I promise you they will, they will let go long enough to, to, to grab their heads and you run. Don't drop your weapon because if they catch up to you, you can use it again. So I always put mine, put either put my thumb through here so I can wet. I put my this hand through there, but most of the time I hold it like this on my hand like this. So if I need to strike out, I got some force behind it to strike. So you can, there's several. I know you all are smart women and you can figure this out. My husband, uh, we had a baton. Um, there's a baton and it's about this size. And when you strike it out, it creates like, I think about six foot. It comes out in little... Um, and little, I want to say little chunks, little phases like this. It's like, okay, you push it out and it goes one, two, three. It's like maybe eight or nine inches, it's about eight or nine inches at a time when you strike it out. And then when you strike it on the concrete, on the ground, it retracts. You just strike it and hold it up and it comes back down into the casing. But it's about this big and you can hold it in your hand and walk with it so if you see somebody coming at you and you know they wanted to harm you you got about six feet in front of you they don't have you don't have to let them come up on you get close enough like you with this one they don't get close enough because if you go like that and you see them coming you can ward them off and it is metal it is hard metal and if you swing they are going to feel it. So I'm just giving you all these little tips to, I know the last time we gave you, you know, first day safety, all that good stuff. But now I'm giving you some personal tips of uh, what to do, uh, especially as nannies and women, when you are out uh, with your babies, protect your babies. Now they don't look like weapons. And when, if somebody saw you holding it, they think, oh, she just got a flashlight. Oh, that's just a key ring holder. But it's for your protection. Mace is another thing. I didn't bring mine in here because me and my fat fingers, I'll end up spraying it and, and then it's going to be the show going to be over. So I kept it away from myself tonight. But there are mace, little mace, cute little maces. My, my husband brought me some mace. They have some that have this um, ultraviolet colors. You can't see it, but if you put that blue light on them, if you spray somebody and they try to get away, you won't. They won't be able to tell it. But if you shine a blue light on them, mine is pink. It shows up neon pink. They have pink ones, orange ones, blue ones, green ones. It shows up under the black light. It shows up in a neon color. So you spray that thing at somebody, oh, it's going to work. They'll get away from you and they can lie and say, no, it wasn't me. But shine the blue, tell them to shine the blue light. And your maze can and the color that's on them matches. Yeah, he's the, he's the one. He's the perpetrator. So get you some mace 
And I like, like I said, I like the ones that, that you can detect under blue light. It's, it, you know, is, is your word against theirs until the blue light comes along. Blue light is like, okay, you're guilty. You were the one. You had something to do. You may not have done all that she said or he said you did, but you had something to do with this because you got it all over you. So just get you some mace. I'm just, I'm just being precautious. And take your flashlight, take your key baton, take your long baton, invest in some classes, self-defense classes. I don't care how old you are. There are ways to defend yourself. I, uh, just a little story. Uh, when I was single uh, and dating, um, I met this guy at a coffee shop and we were saying goodbye and he got a little bit too close. And I was like, uh, can you back up? You in my, you in my personal space. And he was like, oh, baby, I just want to. I said, no. I said, can you back up? You're in my personal space. He reached out for me. And before he knew it, I had him on the car, him behind his back. And he was like, how the heck did I get here? He started screaming like, I just say, um, he was not happy. And he was singing soprano. I just put it like that. And um, somebody witnessed it and called the police. And I was like, I wasn't trying to call the police, but I didn't know what you were going to do to me. So when I asked you to back up and you don't back up, I knew how to defend myself, especially you trying to come on to me and then you reach out for me. No, that don't work with me. Unless I invite you to touch my body. No. And teach your young ones that they it's okay to tell adults no. Especially when they're in, in their body space, not to touch them. Don't force your little ones to give other people hugs because they'll start to think it's okay for some the adults to hug me. Mm -mm. Teach your child about their body. Teach your child about space. Teach your child about uh Adults not touching them when they don't want to be touched. I don't care if it's grandma, grandpa, whoever it is. Don't make your child hug somebody that they don't want to hug because it's disrespectful to your child, first of all. And it's not sending a good message of uh, you making them hug adults. So if a strange adult comes up to them and they say, come give me a hug, and you're always making them go give adults hugs, they'll think it's okay. And they get kidnapped, they get molested, they get all kinds of things can happen to your child. Teach your child it's okay to say, no, I don't want to hug you. Or no, I don't want you to touch me. No, I don't want you to kiss me. Teach them proper ways to say that and when to say that and practice it. You're welcome, Mitch. Practice all of these things with your children. Let them know what it's okay to do and what it's not okay to do. Because if they know that I can tell this adult no, they may be at the park. They may be, you never know, your, your girlfriend's husband, Uncle Ray Ray, Cousin Bubba at the, at the family reunion. Everybody's kids are running around doing things and, and everybody's hugging and touching everybody. And yeah, but I don't care, even if it is family members. Everybody got one that gets a little bit too drunk and gets a little bit too touchy-feely. Your child has the right to say no. And in teaching them how to say no, it gives them confidence to tell you, this person tried to hug me, or this person tried to touch me, or this person tried to do this to me, or this person did do this to me. It gives them confidence to tell you the truth instead of them hush, hush in their way and say, oh, don't tell your mama. This is our secret. 
No, there's no secrets. There are no secrets. We're going to talk to each other. We're going to teach your children early and have drills. Okay, have, you know, your friends come up and try to hug them. And you're like, what do you say? Ask them, you know, do you want this person to hug you? What do you tell this person? You don't want them to hug you. What do you tell them? It will save you and your child if they're bold enough and they're taught to say no when it is appropriate to say no. And I know we as nannies know how to do that. So teach them. I'm just saying, because I would hate for something to happen to your child or to happen to you while you know you while you're on on your watch. I always say, not on my watch. And I do the things that I need to do, take the precautions that I need to take to have, you know, not on my watch. Make sure that you have a charger before you, if you know you're going outside or you're going to the museum or wherever, make sure you plug that phone in and have plenty of juice. You never know what you're going to need. I have two phones. I make sure that one is charged at all times. As a matter of fact, one is on the charger right now while the other one has my earplugs in it. I've been listening to uh, audio books. So, I make sure one is, is is always charged. This one is like at 85%. This one, more like 45% now. Oh, take that back. I got the fast charger. It's at 100%. So, yeah. Always have your phone charged because you never know what you're going to need when you go out. It's fine to take pictures. Make sure you leave enough juice for that uh, and that, that just in case emergency call for 911. Make sure you have that extra uh, phone charger in your emergency kit. And not just your car's nannies. Make sure that if you're driving the nanny car, if you have a nanny car, are you driving mom and dad's car? Make sure they have the same equipment in their car. Make sure that you duplicate your uh, your uh, first aid kits. Oh, and what I didn't show you, because I took it out and washed it, I used it the other day, is cut a, a twin size sheet. You don't have to have, it's, it doesn't have to be expensive because you're going to use it in case of a tourniquet, in case you need to create a shoulder sling. If somebody's arm is hurt or broken and you don't want, you want to keep their, their, their arm close to them, make them a, a sling, cut that sheet diagonally so it's in like in a triangle and that way you can make a sling for them. And you can just fold it up in your, uh, and put it into your first aid kit. Thank you, Stephen. So you all these things you can do, and it won't cost you much of anything, except for the uh, the classes. Now those are good investment. But the first aid kit, have one at home, have one in the nanny home. And make sure you add things to it and check it often because you know how kids go through Band-Aids. Everything is a Band-Aid moment. So make sure you check the gauze and the Band-Aids. Uh, make sure you check the, that first aid kit to make sure you have everything that you need in there. The lights go out. Know where the candles are. Know where the flashlights are. Know where the lighter is to the fireplace. Know how the, if it's gas or if it's... Uh, one of those electric starters. I have a, a gas starter on my uh, wood burning, my wood burning uh, fireplace. The gas starts and ignites it, but then you turn the gas off and let the wood burn. Make sure your your flu in the winter time. Make sure the flu to your um, to your chimney 
open and close. Make sure there's nothing living inside of your chimney or for that matter, inside of your venta hood of your stove. I had birds last year that made a nest. Somehow the, the vent on the outside, somehow they pulled the screen off of there and mama bird just went down up in there. And all of a sudden one day I heard fluttering. I was like, well, maybe that was the wind because it was windy outside. But then I heard beep, 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 beep in the middle of the night. I was like, what is that? What's coming from? The eggs had hatched. I didn't even know they were living in there. So I had to call animal control, have somebody come in and go use a ladder outside because I had a two-story house. They had to go down in there to get the birds out. I don't like killing baby birds. But I also know if you're living in my venta hood, if I turn that thing on and the fan goes, oh, that's going to be just, mm -mm. So make sure there's nothing living in your venta hood. Check it. In the wintertime, before you turn that uh, fireplace on, check the flu, have the chimney swept because there could be leaves or anything that's trapped in there and can cause a fire in your house. And you don't want that. So make sure you check those things. We don't think about them. We just, oh, need a fire. Okay, let's go build a fire. Check those things. Take the time and spend the money uh, How can you carry all those things when you don't drive a car? I just push a stroller. Okay, so if you have a stroller and you have a diaper bag that you carry with you, you can make you a little miniature first aid kit. The one that you use, the one that I showed you is one I keep in my car. They have little, well, I, now is a hard time to find them. They do have little cans of Lysol that you can put in there. They do have little, um, you can take one of these bandages out off of here, take five different sizes of bandages with you in a little, little pouch, a fanny pack. You can create a little fanny pack first aid kit that you can wear. I'll put it in a stroller, attach it to the stroller. There are ways around carrying all these things and you don't have to have everything, but have some scissors, first of all, and have some gauze because most injuries, you're going to need some cleaning fluid. Get you, um, they have the little travel size um, like the little three ounce bottles that you can get, uh, that you put your little lotions and soaps in when you travel, because I have several of them. Get you some of those, get you a set of those. They have them in the spray bottle. They have them in the little uh, flip top where you squeeze it out. Get some of those. They also have the A&D ointment, it's small. So you can add things to your, uh, your pad. This, these will fit. You don't have to carry the wipes. I mean, you got a diaper bag, you probably carry wipes, but these will fit with, and get a little eight ounce bottle of water. All you got to do is take one out, pour the water on top. If it's strictly for these, um, let me find, where's my water bottle? I'm going to show you how to do this in the water bottle. This is what I normally do when I have my water bottle. But I can't if I if I'm somewhere that I can't pour my water. I can get this out of here. I put this right here. It fits. Let me turn around. It fits right there, and I just pour the water, and it'll it starts to expand. Can you see that? The more I pour the water, the more it's expanding. It's coming out of the, and then I'll take the other end and it expands a little more. So that little thing of water. All right, let me put the top on here because I don't want this to waste all over my computer. But that little roll, it unrolls into a towel. 
And that's what I do with a water bottle. You can take a small water bottle. They will uh, unfold it like that. Wash your child's hands if they're eating something. You can clean their hands before they, they, they have snack. You can clean their hands and face after they have snack. These little things. And in case you missed it, it's called toetab.com. I'm going to put it, I'm going to type it into um, the, uh, let me see if I can find it. I'm going to type it into the, the comments so that you can see them, see what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can type it here. I might be able to type it here. There you go, toetabs.com. And you can order you some of these. They work great at picnics. They great, great, great in emergencies. Um, like I said, I carry them everywhere. So get you some of these. They are biodegradable, so you don't have to worry about the environment. If you worry about, oh, you're killing the tree, oh, just, they're biodegradable. You, um, and my husband loved these. They use these during wartime because um, you can dig a hole and put it in there and it, like I said, biodegradable. So when they're out in the field practicing their war games, they use these. So you can use them too because, hey, we're out in the field every day with our, our nanny kids. And sometimes it feels like a war trying to fight with them to clean their mouths and, and get and then they're like, leave me alone, don't touch me. Yeah, it can feel like a war. So get you some of these. But uh and the, the link is right there, toetabs.com. Oh, it's been an hour already. Okay, I can't believe it's been that long. Um Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any more questions, I thought this was off. If you have any questions, please let me know now before I end uh, this broadcast. Uh, while I'm waiting on your questions, I'm going to share this with the rest of the groups that I didn't get to change to share with before before uh, it goes off, so they can come and and catch it. Uh, okay, there we go. I wanted to share to the groups. Okay, does anybody have questions? I don't see any questions on here. All right. I'm just going to finish sharing this and then I will be out of your hair. Okay, I just posted that in the wrong spot. Sorry, y'all. Somebody's gonna get that twice. Uh, let me take the change. And now my phone's acting crazy and doesn't want to uh, let me do what I need to do. Okay, so what I didn't tell you was this. Next, starting next Monday, which is August the um, the third, starting August the third. You're welcome, uh, life of a fantastic and professional nanny. Um, starting August the third through the end of October. I am doing a series called The Coronials. Now, most of you all know that uh, as the NCS, we call this, these corona babies, we call them coronials because they've been produced during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Now, I know that with the situation being the way it is, a lot of people are not going to be able to afford an NCS. 
and they are going to want to hire nannies to help them. So what I have planned to get you all started, because I don't want you to go in without um, being prepared, at least having the basic knowledge. And that's, a, and, and trust me, this is basic knowledge. This is not a class. This is not uh, uh, something if you want to take their classes, I'm bringing in some professionals and they are going to um, educate you on the basics of what they do. I'm bringing in a childhood nutritionist. I'm bringing in a uh, internal medicine doctor. She's going to talk to us about self-care. I'm bringing in someone who uh, does CP is a CPR CPR and first aid instructor. She's going to give us some demonstration. I have a car seat uh, child passenger uh, safety technician. I think I said that right. Um, that's coming to give us some tips about car seats uh, because all these babies, some nannies know about babies and they have taken care of babies before, but some of you haven't. We're going to have a postpartum doula that's going to come and talk to us about helping to care for the mom, knowing the signs and when to call for help, when to call a real postpartum doula. That you can assist the mom uh, with certain things, but there are certain things that you cannot assist them with or else you are stepping outside of your scope, of uh, your range of, of learning. And you need to know those signs as to when to call for help. I have a lactation specialist that's coming. A lot of these parents are going to want to breastfeed. And uh, I have a lactation specialist coming to show you how to handle breast milk, how to warm it up, how to store it, how long it can be stored. You cannot show mama unless you are a lactation educator, unless you are a lactation consultant or IBCLC, you cannot show mama how to breastfeed, how to uh, different techniques and things, unless you are, you have that certification. I want you to know the basics because I want you to be the best for those parents. Now, there are going to be a lot of NCSs working, but with the amount of babies that we predict, because when the hurricane hit Houston and all those babies came, Oh my gosh, there was a lot of babies. But this is a pandemic all over the world. So wherever you are, it's not just one area. It's all over the world. It's all in every country. There are going to be some coronials. And they're going to need mom and dad are going to need your help. So you are going to learn something. I'm bringing in an NCS because as a nanny, I had a set of twins. I started out working uh, grandma and grandpa were there doing the day. I started out working at overnight. So you're going to know need to know what to do overnight with these babies if you never worked overnight with babies, if you never worked overnight in someone's home. You're going to need to know all these things. So I have an NCS who is coming to give you a few tips. And I said tips, not a whole class. So, so don't quote me on that because that would be wrong. I have all these professionals that are coming in to teach you about what to do. Some of you are, going, are working with families now. I have someone who is a doula. She, she trains doulas and she can give you some advice and some tips on how to help mom before she has that baby. I'm not saying that you're going to get a class. You can take their classes. I keep saying this because I don't want you to get mistaken and say, oh, Asinani is offering classes. No, Asinani is not offering these particular classes. It's basic tips on things you can do to make mom and dad more comfortable and to help you do your job more efficient. And uh, who else did I have? I have. Uh, a new parent educator, just in case uh, the you nannies who get a hold of new parents. Most new parents don't know what they want until they decide they want it. 
and they don't know because they've never had a newborn baby. So you have to be patient with them. I have a newborn, a new parent educator that's going to talk to you all how to be parents. I'm uh, patient with the parents and help them to decide what they need best for their baby. Um, I have a swaddling guru that's coming. You're going to have to learn how to swaddle these babies. If you've never swallowed a baby, that's going to be the shows that you need to watch. Um, let's see. I think I got, oh, and I have someone coming uh, who is uh, higher order and preemies. Uh, when I say higher order, I mean they have taken care of more than just twins and triplets. That ain't me. I know my limit. I'm sticking with twins. I tried triplets one time and that was not for me. Twins, that's me. That's my range. I know twins in and out. After having 38 sets of them, working with 30, uh, not having sets, working with 38 sets of twins, I pretty much know the ins and outs. I don't know everything. There's still more to learn. And, and, and always know, even if you know some things, there is still always more to learn because the people that I'm bringing, they are continuously learning that times are always changing and methods are always changing. Laws are always changing. Recalls, uh, this method doesn't work anymore. They, they said, stop doing this because this is happening to the baby. Stop doing that. These people that I'm bringing to you are on top of their game and can tell you new things that are happening within their scope. So we're gonna have a series from August to the end of October. And each week is gonna be a new specialist. And when I say specialist, I mean someone that's at the top of their game and they know what they're talking about. That can teach you and give you tips and tricks on what's going on. Because when these babies come, I want you prepared. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can go in there and tell them, I know how to do this. I know this. I know that. I know this. I know that. And it gets you hired quicker. It gets you, uh, it makes you more knowledgeable, makes you more comfortable with the parents and the, and the infants that are coming. And you'll know when to call for backup. Instead of trying to stress yourself out and do it yourself, you are a nanny. You're not a doctor. You're not a doula. You're not a um, a postpartum doula. But you're going to be put into those roles because you are a nanny. You're going to be forced into those roles. But there's a limit to what you can do. I'm bringing in the experts to, to give you knowledge in all these areas. Because if you have all of them put together, it's going to make you greater than what you are now. But again, this is not classes. This is gaining knowledge. Professional development knowledge, not professional classes, not certification classes. I'm just trying to make this clear to everyone that's watching. I want you to be prepared. I want you to have some knowledge going in instead of going in blind. Because I know when these babies hit, it is going to be overwhelming to not only the families, but it's going to be overwhelming to you. I want you to be prepared. So I'm preparing you now because. Uh, the lockdown happened in March. So from March to December. Okay, so right around November, December, when these babies start coming, you're going to be on point and you're going to know what to do because you have been here, you have taken notes and you study and you're going to be, I'm the one you need to hire. I'm just saying. So starting next week. Okay, now. I also have another announcement. Last week we had uh, Carmen Lene 
and we had Miss Nanny Monique on our show for uh, the books. Now, I promised to give away some books and the two people that came up that followed the instructions were Meechus, Miss Fan Life of a Fantastic Professional Nanny, and Crystal Crawford. So, you two have won one of uh, Carmen Lene's books. There's The Princess uh, and the, what's the name of that book? I'll Fly When I Want To. So, I need you two to send me your, uh, PM me your mailing addresses so that I can uh, get your books out to you. I think Miss Nanny Monique announced her book on Instagram uh, last Tuesday. So, yes. Yes, Miss Meaches, you won. Uh, so, when you, you know, you never know what I'm going to be doing. Oh, that reminds me. I was going to put out a post, but I might as well tell you now. Wednesday is my birthday. Da, 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 da. But I am going to be doing some giveaways myself. You all know I sell jam and I'm giving a buy one, get one free. A true bogan, not half off, none of it. Buy one, get one free. So you buy two, you get two free. You buy three, you get three free. It's my birthday and I want to give. So uh, this jam good, hit me up on this jam good. You can hit me up on Ask the Nanny. You can hit me up on personal, uh, on my Facebook page, uh, Angela Johnson. Or you can hit me up on uh, the PM. If you have my phone number, you can hit me up there too. So if you want to buy some jam, buy one, get one. It's a birthday sale. It's a buy one, get one free. Uh, I have about 30 or 40 jars uh, that, that are just waiting to go out. So you want them, you better hurry up, come on and get them. So I will see you all next week when we start our series of the Coronials. And I'm going to put a post up probably tomorrow so that you will know what's going on each week. What's happening, What? because if you need to brush up on your area, you'll know this is what's happening. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. And I will guarantee you that I will be off on Labor Day. So y'all can mark that day out. <laughs> put a big red X over there. Acid will not be on on Labor Day. But every other Monday, besides Labor Day, we will be coming to you with uh, the coronials. So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please take a moment now, go to youtube.com forward slash ask the nanny, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You know you want to. You get the nanny hookup on, on YouTube. You get cooking recipes. I cook twice a week on uh, live. You get the recipes. And you get bonus recipes that I don't do live. And you, there are stories uh, there on the page. Those, when you have, uh, you have your little young ones. And the reason I did it is because every spring and fall, I lose my voice. And I had to find a way to read stories to my kids. So I've chose some of their favorite stories and I read them out loud. I recorded them. I put them on my YouTube page. They have the pictures to go with them. So check them out. There's plenty of stories over there. Um, and there's some toddler activities that you can do too with your kids. Thank you, uh, Meaches. Okay, so like I said, uh, youtube.com forward slash Ask the Nanny. If you haven't liked Ask the Nanny page, please stop by. Give us a like. Leave a review. If you enjoyed tonight's show, it was very informative to you, please stop by. Leave us a review. The more reviews we get, the more people see, okay, 
as an aneurysm and, and I get more people uh, t- on here, more professionals on here to help you. More top of the line people come and help you and tell you this is what, you know, how the cow chews the could, as my grandpa used to say. So I will see you all next week at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, tomorrow night, if you are interested, please come and watch the international, uh, not international, U.S. Nanny Association. Um, we are having a webinar on the U.S. Nanny Association page with the, uh, oh, hmm, sorry, something bit me, uh, the NSE, which is the Nanny uh, Center Education Fund. Uh, so if you want to uh, find out about, more about them, I will be hosting tomorrow night with the uh, the founders of that fund. So if you want to get some professional development, uh, money to go to school and take these, some of these classes, you need to be there. And I'll see you all next time, next week, same time, same place. You all have a great week.